Hello class, I'm Mr Thornton and I can help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, we're going to calculate speed and velocity and then we're going to represent that on a distance time graph. Warning, this will relate only to distance time graphs, not velocity time graphs. I repeat, this will relate only to distance time graphs. Velocity time graphs will be covered in another lesson. So let's start with how we work out how quickly something's moving. And this is an equation which you probably saw at key stage three. You may well have seen it in year nine or maybe even year eight. Speed equals distance divided by time. This is the kind of equation you can expect to need to work with quite a lot in GCSE. So the way this works is the speed of an object is a product of the distance, whatever distance that object has traveled, divided by how long it's taken to travel that distance. You'll be given a distance, you'll be given a time, you just need to divide one by the other, and you are allowed to take a calculator into the exam. Take one. It only needs to be a basic one, doesn't need to be a scientific one, but do take a calculator into your exam. So let's have a look at a very simple example. Let's say that we've got someone who is a 100 meter sprinter, so they're running 100 meters, and they've taken 10 seconds to do that. The calculation that you do to work out their speed couldn't really be much simpler. Their speed equals 100 meters divided by 10 seconds, which comes out 100 divided by 10 is 10, and the units are meters per second. Make sure you learn these units. You are going to need to know units. And these are moderately common ones. These crop up reasonably frequently. That's all there is to working out the speed of an object. Literally, you take the distance, divide it by the time. You don't need to worry about anything else. Now, the equation for velocity is almost identical to the equation for speed. You work it out in exactly the same way. Distance divided by time. And again, you'll get given a distance, you'll get given a time and you divide one by the other. The only real difference between velocity and speed is that velocity has direction. Now you need to know that phrase. Velocity is speed in a direction. But what that really means to you is that if something's moving forwards, then when you work out its velocity, it'll be a positive number. If it's moving backwards, then it'll be a negative number. Now I can show you what I mean about velocity with a distance time graph. Again, that safety warning here Make sure you're dealing with a distance time graph. Make sure it says distance on that vertical axis. Everything from here on out is going to be incorrect unless you're dealing with a distance time graph. Check and double check that. So what you really need to know for your C in the first case is how to describe what's going on when you see one of these distance time graphs. And it's really, really simple. Here is your distance, and the further away you get from this zero point, the further away you've travelled. And time is going to be moving along as that happens. So here's an object steadily getting further away. We can say it's got constant velocity or constant speed because it's a straight line. It's a constant slope. If we had a slope that wasn't as steep, then that would also be a constant velocity, but because it's not as steep, it's a lower velocity, it's a lower speed. So it's not moving as quickly. Okay, this is a fast object, this is a slow object. This is an object that has now stopped. So if your line is going completely horizontally, completely level like that, its speed is zero meters per second. It's come to a complete halt. And finally, That's an object going backwards. So if the line is sloping back downwards like this, that object is reversing. This is what we call a positive gradient, by the way. When the line is sloping that way, that's zero gradient. And this one here, that's what we call a negative gradient. When the line is sloping down back towards the zero line here. So let's run through that again and have another look. This first line is an object moving away from its start point and it's moving at a constant velocity. We know it's a constant velocity because that's a straight line. This second line has a steeper gradient, so that means it's moving faster, but it's still got a constant velocity and it's still moving forwards. The third section of our graph means the object has stopped. Distance isn't changing over time, so it's not going anywhere. And finally, when the line drops back down like this, that's what we call a negative velocity because it's got a negative gradient, it's sloping back down again, and so it's reversed. 
Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and remember if this video was useful to you, like it, share it, and you can subscribe for more all below.